walk home after killing all hyenas and roos, Rondu made his way back to where he lived. The streets were dimly lit, the silence of the street occasionally interrupted by the distant sounds of the city. His mind, however, was anything but silent. It buzzed with thoughts of Kus and the strange events that had unfolded. Lingering doubts. Today, Kus is really strange, Rondu muttered to himself. Why did he deliver the letter on this day? Why did Rose appear right at the time I arranged to meet Flora? When I asked who delivered this letter to him, he hesitated before answering. Today, he looked very restless and sad. These thoughts lingered in Rondu's head like poisonous snakes, denying him a moment of peace. Every smallest detail became important. Every action and word of Kus seemed to contain some hidden meaning. Rondu tried to piece together the puzzle, but still couldn't find a satisfactory answer. A troubling friendship. Cus and I have been close friends for a long time. There's no way he would betray me, Rondu reassured himself. But a part of him couldn't ignore the strange coincidences. Ruse's appearance, the mysterious letter, and Cus's unusual behavior today all pointed to a hidden hand orchestrating it all. Rondu felt like he was caught up in a bigger conspiracy, a dangerous game with unseen players. He knew he needed to uncover the truth, but he also feared that the answers might change everything he believed. Doubt and anxiety grew in Rondu's heart, an insecurity he couldn't shake off. Preparing for the confrontation. Returning home, Rondu decided he had to confront Kus and uncover what he was hiding. But he also needed to prepare for what could happen, for truth that might turn his whole life upside down. It seemed that everything had been arranged in advance, and Rondu was just a piece on this large chessboard. Aftermath of the battle. After the grueling battle with the hyenas, Rondu returned home, his mind unable to shake the thoughts of his friend Kus. Cus had acted so strangely, and Rondu couldn't dismiss the sense that something was amiss. Determined not to let these concerns fester in silence, he resolved to visit Cus's house and seek answers. The unsettling silence. Arriving at Cus's house, Rondu immediately sensed that something was wrong. The air was unnaturally still, and an eerie quiet hung over the place. He knocked on the door, but no one answered. Trying the handle, he found the door unlocked. Hesitantly, he pushed it open and stepped inside. An abandoned home. The interior of the house was unsettlingly intact. Household items remained in their places, untouched and undisturbed. Dishes were still set on the dining table, clothes hung neatly on hangers, and books lay open on the table as if someone had been in the middle of reading them. Yet, there was no sign of life. The hasty departure. As Rondu moved from room to room, a strange feeling of dread began to envelop him. It became clear that Kus and his family had left in a hurry. It seems like they left right after Kus returned from my house, Rondu mused. He tried to recall every detail of his recent encounter with Kus, searching for any clues. The elusive letter. He remembered Kus's hesitant response when he had asked about the person who gave him the letter. Who gave you the letter? Rondu wondered aloud, trying to piece together the fragments of the mystery. Kus's sudden disappearance only deepened Rondu's resolve to uncover the truth. The note. Rummaging through the house, Rondu stumbled upon a note that had fallen to the floor, seemingly forgotten in the haste of departure. It contained only a brief message. Temporarily leaving, don't know when I'll return. Growing confusion. Confusion and unease washed over Rondu. Cus had never been one to act without reason. What could have caused him and his entire family to leave so abruptly? Rondu decided that finding out who had given Cus the letter was the key to unraveling the mystery. But who was this person? And what were their intentions? Determined investigation. Determined to find the truth, Rondu set out on a quest for answers. He knew that solving this mystery was the only way to understand the events that had transpired and to protect those he loved. Despite the potential dangers, he was resolute in his determination. The dawn of terror. The first light of dawn brought with it a nightmare to Rondu's village. B. Ruse's father had sworn vengeance, and his immense hatred had driven him to lead a monstrous gang of hundreds of hyenas. This wasn't just about avenging his son's death. Boozy wanted to obliterate the village and spread terror and destruction. The Black Army approaches. From a far hill, a terrifying sight appeared. A Black Army of hyenas advanced towards the village like a wave of death. 
Buzi led the charge, his eyes blazing with fury, his smile a sinister omen. Rondu, today you will pay for everything, he roared, his voice slicing through the morning calm. The attack begins. Without a moment's hesitation, Buzi ordered the attack. Gunfire erupted, bullets tearing through the air, targeting the innocent villagers. Screams and cries echoed as people fled in panic. Houses crumbled under the onslaught, fires raged and thick black smoke blanketed the sky. Rondu's Realization Rondu, startled by the distant gunshots and screams, felt a surge of anxiety. What is happening, he wondered aloud. He dashed out of his house, only to be met with a scene from a nightmare. His beloved village was in flames, friends and neighbors lay wounded or dead. The devastation was a stark reminder of the hyena's thirst for revenge. Protecting his siblings. With his heart pounding and his mind racing, Rondu knew his immediate priority was to protect his two younger siblings from the murderous hyenas. An unprecedented sense of urgency gripped him as he rushed back to his house. The plan to escape. He found his siblings, their eyes wide with fear and confusion. We have to get out of here now, he said firmly, though his voice carried a note of reassurance. They nodded, at clutching his hands tightly as he led them towards the road to Mount Evie, where he hoped they could find temporary safety. The encirclement. But as they reached the outskirts of the village, Rondu's heart sank. The hyenas had encircled them, their bloodshot eyes glinting menacingly in the morning light. They're here, whispered one of his siblings, his voice trembling. Determination to protect Rondu squeezed his brother's hand, trying to instill some courage. Don't worry, I'll protect you guys, he said, his own resolve hardening. The hyenas advanced slowly, their growls a death knell. With no escape in sight, Rondu knew he had to fight to protect his siblings. Searching for an escape. Desperation fueled his search for an escape route. But the hyenas had them tightly surrounded. Each step they took, closing the circle tighter. Rondu knew he had to create an opening, no matter the cost. He looked at his siblings, his eyes filled with determination. I'll find a way to get you out of here, he promised. Preparing for battle, Rondu's heart pounded with resolve as he returned to his house, intent on protecting his two younger siblings from the onslaught of hyenas. His steps were heavy with the weight of the impending battle but his determination was unwavering. He quickly opened the door, retrieving the ice sword and tucking the leather sheaths containing iron bars into his coat. As he looked around the familiar rooms of his home, he knew he was about to face what could be his final fight, the secret basement. He called his siblings closer, his eyes full of love yet fiery with resolve. Our house has a secret basement, he said, his voice deep and serious. You two hide inside. I will fight them. When you don't hear the sounds of fighting outside, get out of here. Fora, his little sister, her eyes sparkling with worry, asked, What about you? Rondu smiled gently, though it was tinged with sadness. I'll be okay, he replied, trying to reassure her. But deep down, he thought, maybe today is my last day. I promised our mother that I would take care of and protect you too. A heartfelt goodbye. He bent down and hugged his siblings tightly, feeling their warmth. He kissed each of them on the forehead, his kisses filled with love and sacrifice. Fora and his little brother, tears welling in their eyes, hugged him back tightly, clinging to this moment. I'll be back, Rondu whispered, his voice choked with emotion. Be strong for me, for mom. He let them go, looking at them one last time before standing up, his eyes now burning with determination. Facing the enemy. Stepping outside, Rondu felt the early morning's cold wind as if nature itself was warning him of the battle to come. He rushed from the house at breakneck speed, his ice sword flashing in the sunlight, both a deadly weapon and a powerful shield. Gunshots rang out, bullets hurtling towards him. Lightning fast, Rondu used the ice sword to deflect each bullet, creating dazzling sparks with each impact. The fierce battle. Every move Rondu made was a blend of skill and determination. He did not falter, continuing his relentless charge. His other hand swiftly pulled iron bars from his coat, launching them with pinpoint accuracy. The iron bars flew like silver arrows, piercing the air and striking the nearest hyenas. Screams of pain echoed as the iron bars pierced their bodies, blood gushing out in crimson streams. But Rondu's assault did not relent. 
the iron bars continued their deadly trajectory, piercing through multiple hyenas and creating a chain reaction of falling bodies. Rondu's unstoppable force. The battle raged on fiercely, but Rondu never slowed. He dodged bullets, blocked gunfire with his ice sword, and unleashed iron bars like a deadly rain. Each attack brought death to the hyenas, who were left astonished and terrified by Rondu's incredible power. One by one, the hyenas fell, their faces filled with panic and surprise. Rondu stood amidst the carnage, breathing heavily but his eyes still burning with determination. The observation Busy's heart pounded violently in his chest as he observed Rondu from a distance. Each of Rondu's movements was powerful and precise, swiftly and brutally taking down each hyena that dared to challenge him. The sight of Rondu's effortless domination ignited a blazing fire of hatred within Bussy. His eyes narrowed, and his breathing grew ragged with every fallen comrade. Busi's gaze shifted to a nearby hyena, the one who had delivered Ruse's letter and pointed out Rondu's name and location. Busi's voice, thick with fury, is this the Rondu who killed Ruse? The hyena's voice trembled as he replied, yes boss, it was he who threw an iron bar into Ruse's neck. This confirmation was like pouring gasoline on an already raging fire. Busi's anger soared, his eyes burning with a ferocity that seemed almost inhuman. His fists clenched so tightly that his claws dug into his palms, drawing blood. He could feel the hot blood pulsing through his veins, each throb a reminder of his seething rage. The image of Roos, his lifeless body with the iron bar protruding from his neck, haunted Bussy's mind, fueling his hatred to new, uncontrollable heights. A call to arms, Bus stood tall on the top of the hill, his thick fur glinting with a cruel blood-red hue. He let out a long, guttural howl, a sound filled with raw, unrestrained anger. The howl reverberated through the valley. From all directions, hyenas began to appear. They moved swiftly, a dark, ominous tide, their eyes ablaze with the same hatred that consumed Buzzy. Their growls filled the air, a cacophony of rage and anticipation, like thousands of demons summoned from the depths of hell. Buzzy, standing on a large rock, looked every bit the furious commander. His eyes were cold and hard as iron as he gazed down at his assembled army. His voice cut through the noise like a knife, sharp and commanding. Today, we will not leave any chance to Rondu. Whoever killed Roos will pay with his blood. The hyenas roared in unison, their combined voices like thunder, creating an atmosphere charged with violence and hatred. Beezy raised his hands high, his gesture strong and fierce. No mercy, no concessions, tear him apart, make him feel the pain he has caused us. The charge. The hyenas, energized by Busi's fury and hatred, surged forward. Each step was heavy and decisive, their collective movement a force of nature, unstoppable and merciless. Busi leaped down from the rock, leading the charge like a war god. His steps were strong, his resolve unshakable, his eyes fixed on one goal, Rondu. In Busy's mind, there was no room for anything but his burning desire for revenge. The sight of Rondu, calm and powerful, only intensified his rage. He could feel the hyenas behind him, their hatred mirroring his own, ready to unleash a storm of violence upon their enemy. The twist of fate. In the midst of his fierce battle with the hyenas, Rondu was abruptly jolted by a heart-wrenching scream. Save me, Rondu! His heart pounded in his chest as he turned, his eyes widening in horror. He saw Fura and Tadis being dragged away by four hyenas, their hands cruelly tied behind their backs. Panic and anger surged through him, the sight of his siblings in peril igniting a fierce determination. A sneak attack. While Rondu had been valiantly fighting the hyenas outside, four other hyenas had stealthily infiltrated the house with the sinister goal of ensuring the village's complete destruction. They had searched the entire house and found no one. But just as they were about to leave, one hyena stopped suddenly. It looks like the house has a cellar. I just stepped on it, and the echo was louder than other areas. Let's go down and see, he suggested. The Basement Discovery Entering the dark, musty basement, they discovered Fora and Tadis trembling in fear. The children's eyes were wide with terror, and their bodies shook with each breath. The four hyenas laughed menacingly, pointing their guns at the terrified siblings, clearly intending to end their lives. 
Fura's defiance. In that critical moment of life and death, the warrior blood of the Ruta family surged through Fora's veins. She stood defiantly, her voice loud and clear. Our brother Rondu will take revenge. He will kill you like insects. The hyena's reaction. The hyenas paused, exchanging surprised glances at the mention of Rondu's name. One of them spoke up. Rondu is your brother? Fora nodded firmly. Yes, he is. After a brief, silent exchange, the hyenas decided against killing Fora and Tadis. Instead, they lowered their weapons, tied the children up, and resolved to bring them to Buzi for further instructions. Rondu's anguish. Meanwhile, Rondu stood not far away, his heart filled with anger and worry as he watched the horrifying scene unfold. He knew he had to act quickly to save his siblings before it was too late. The heat of battle, Rondu's heart pounded with a mix of determination and desperation as he saw Fura and Tatis being dragged away by four hyenas. His resolve hardened, he had to save them. Without hesitation, he hurled two iron bars at the hyenas flanking his siblings. The iron bars flew with precision, piercing their targets and causing the hyenas to collapse in agony and die instantly. A hero's resolve, Rondu charged forward, his eyes locked on his siblings. Just as he neared them, he was suddenly hit by a volley of bullets. Two struck his shoulder, and two hit his chest, causing blood to gush out. The pain was excruciating, but he gripped the ice sword tightly, his will unwavering. Under fire. The hyenas didn't relent, bullets continued to whiz past him. Rondu used his swordsmanship to deflect the bullets, but his injuries were severe, sapping his agility. His vision blurred with blood, but his determination remained steadfast. He forced himself to stand, only to be hit by another barrage, causing him to stumble and fall. Desperation and defiance. Fora and Tadis, watching in horror as their brother was repeatedly hit, screamed in panic and fear. Despite his wounds and the pain racking his body, Rondu refused to give up. He pushed himself up once more, his eyes fixed on his siblings, silently vowing to protect them at any cost. The last stand, Rondu's body was exhausted, covered in blood, yet he forced himself to rise. The relentless rain of bullets continued, offering him no respite. More bullets struck him, and he collapsed, his arms reaching out towards his siblings. I will protect you two at all costs, he thought, clinging to consciousness. Busy's approach. Busy, watching from a distance, began to approach slowly. His eyes were filled with hatred and brutality. He shouted, his voice dripping with malice. Rondu, look here. I own this game and always will be. I will kill everyone one by one so you can see, and you must suffer like I suffered when you took Rose's life. A desperate plea. Rondu, his voice weak and trembling, begged desperately. Please don't kill my two younger siblings. You can do whatever you want to me, even take my life. Boozy, tears streaming down his face, shook his head in anger. No, Rondu, it can't be like that. You have to feel the pain of losing your loved one. I want you to feel this pain like the way you did to me. He shouted, his voice filled with pain and hatred. Do you understand? Fura's defiance. Fura, her hands tied, showed no fear. She spoke loudly. Don't beg him, Rondu. Death will come to everyone. Boozy turned to her, surprised by her courage. You surprise me, he said. Fora looked straight at him, her eyes blazing with hatred, unflinching. The tragic moment. In a brutal moment, Boozy pulled out a gun and shot Fora straight in the chest. Blood spurted from her wound as she fell. Rondu watched in horror, screaming in despair. No! He tried to stand, but his severe injuries kept him down. Tears streamed down his face, filled with pain and helplessness as he saw his sister being shot. A brother's pain. Rondu's screams echoed in the air, his voice filled with agony. He reached out towards Fora, but his body wouldn't move. His heart ached with an intensity he had never felt before. Fora lay motionless, her eyes closed, her breathing shallow. Tadis, tears streaming down his face, shouted, Please, don't hurt her. She's just an innocent girl. Unmoved by the boy's plea, sneered. You will all suffer for what Rondu did. Despite the unbearable pain, Rondu's spirit did not break. He forced his body to move, inching closer to his siblings. His vision was darkening, but his resolve was clear. He had to save Tadis, even if it meant giving his last breath. The courage of a warrior. Rondu's fingers dug into the earth as he pulled himself forward. His strength was fading, but his will kept him going. Every sentiment he moved was a testament to his love and determination. He reached for his ice sword, using it to prop himself up. 
A cruel stance, Busy's foot pressed down heavily on Rondu's battered body, forcing him to the ground with a sickening thud. All strength seemed to drain from Rondu's limbs, leaving him powerless and gasping for breath. Busy spoke coldly, his voice dripping with malice. Now is the moment of truth. I will shoot her in the head. Death will come immediately. That's how lenient I am. Fura's bravery. Despite being tied up and facing imminent death, Fura displayed an astonishing lull of courage. She turned her head slightly, locking eyes with her brother. Her voice, barely a whisper but filled with resolve, reached Rondu's ears. Be strong like our father, Rondu. Avenge me. See you on the other side. A heartbreaking farewell, tears welled up in Rondu's eyes as he felt an overwhelming sense of loss and helplessness. Fora's bravery pierced his heart, filling him with a profound sadness. He watched, powerless, as Boozy approached Fora. Without a moment's hesitation, Boozy raised his gun and fired. The gunshot echoed through the air, and blood spurted from Fora's head. She fell lifelessly to the ground. The final blow, Boozy, ensuring that no hope remained, fired a second shot into Fora's head. The finality of the act extinguished the last flicker of life from her body. Tadis, watching in horror, wept bitterly, his small frame trembling with fear and grief. Rondu's promise. Despite his own grievous injuries and the devastating loss of his sister, Rondu summoned every ounce of strength left in him. His voice, choked with emotion but filled with fierce determination, called out to Tadis. Don't be afraid, Tadis. Death will come to everyone. Be brave like our father. I will avenge you, or I will meet you on the other side of the world. He repeated Fura's words, tears streaming down his face, his heart heavy with pain and anger. Biz's cruelty, Boozy stood there, unmoved and cold. There was no hint of remorse or regret in his eyes. His sole purpose was to inflict the deepest pain on Rondu, to make him suffer as he had suffered with the loss of his son Ruse. But even in the face of such cruelty, Rondu's spirit did not break. The fire of hatred burned brightly in his heart, fueling his determination to take revenge and fulfill his promise to Fora. The agony of loss. Rondu looked up, tears blurring his vision, as Busy approached Tadis. Tadis, Rondu's youngest brother, stood with tears streaming down his face, eyes filled with a mixture of fear and acceptance before the approach of death. I will make you feel real pain, Rondu. Bus snarled, his voice dripping with hatred and venom. I will do it the same way I killed your sister. I will shoot him before your eyes, so that you will have to endure the pain of losing everything you hold most precious. Tadis brave farewell. Tadis, despite his fear, tried to maintain his composure. He looked towards Rondu, his voice trembling but resolute. Rondu, I'm not afraid, he said. I know you will find a way to avenge us. I believe in you. Rondu's heartbreak. Rondu's heart shattered. He struggled to swallow his tears, his voice choked with emotion. Tatis, I'm sorry, he whispered, feeling the weight of his failure. I failed to protect you and Fora. Busy pointed the gun at Tatis's head, and Tatis closed his eyes, waiting for death. No. Rondu screamed in despair, his voice echoing through the desolate air, but he was powerless to intervene. The gunshot rang out, piercing the silence. Tadis collapsed, blood flowing and staining the ground a deep crimson. Rondu felt a pain that cut through him, deeper than any wound, something that words could not convey. He could only lie there, consumed by the pain and helplessness of losing both of his beloved siblings. A newfound resolve. In that agonizing moment, Rondu realized he had nothing left to lose. The pain and hatred in his heart ignited into a burning fire driving him towards vengeance. Fora, Tadis, I will not let your deaths be in vain, Rondu vowed silently, his eyes burning with determination despite his weary body. I will avenge you too, at any cost.